Hi everyone, welcome back to Adventures in Nature with Jan. I'm gonna do one of my favorite activities today and it's called pond scooping in nature or pond scooping. Basically what I'm gonna do is look for the critters that live in the water. And it can be any kind of water. It could be a pond. Um, this pond just happens to be in a neighborhood park um, in my neighborhood. And um, we also have lakes or even in puddles you can find critters. So you can look for um, nature critters in any kind of water. A depression in your yard might fill up with water, but you never know where you're gonna find something that might live. And everything uses water at one time in its life cycle. So let's see what we find today because again, this is one of my favorite activities to do outside in nature. Um, be sure you wanna dress to be able to get kind of muddy. Don't worry about the clothes that you're wearing. Wear old clothes, wear rubber boots if you have them, or wear old shoes that you don't mind getting dirty and muddy. Um, so join me and we'll find some critters in the water. Okay, so I'm gonna reach out with my pond net, put it to the bottom of the pond, and just kind of scrape back and pull up some of the plants and the muck and the mud and see if anybody's in my pond net here in my catch. And if so, we'll put it in. I'll sift through, if you can see. Actually, I'll go ahead and set this in here and we'll see if I have anything. And that didn't work real well. So, oh, okay. And right here we see in my bucket that I just uh, scooped out right before this scoop, I have a crayfish. Right there, he looks just like a miniature lobster. I have a leech that kind of looks like a worm. I love to put a leech in a clear jar. Um, we have down here a dragonfly nymph. And if you can believe it, that critter is going to end up looking, uh, turning into a flying dragonfly later in his life. And I have a cousin to that, really tiny and delicate, the damselfly nymph. I don't know if you're able to get a picture of that. Um, and we have a back swimmer or water boatman here scooting around. We have a couple little scud or side swimmers. And we have a lot of um, little fingerling clams. Um, and the clams are soft bodied animals um, that live in a limey shell, a double shell. We also have snails in another bucket that are one shell with a um, soft body part. So we'll, um, we'll keep scooping and see if we find other things. So just go out to any body of water and have fun. Oh, did I get some? Oh, some flapping around. Oh, I got a tadpole. Look, I got a tadpole. Oh, let me get him into my other bucket here. Look what I got. So I have a tadpole in here. Exciting. There are tons of frogs in this pond, so I knew there had to be a tadpole. Along with my crayfish, my dragonfly nymph, my water boatman or backstrider there. Ooh, zipping around. Um, damselfly nymph, some scud, my leech. I'm so excited that I got a tadpole. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to show you um, in individual buckets, each of the critters or pretty much an individual bucket so that you can see a little better. Um, the first bucket I have are orb snails. If you can see those, there's two at the top. There's a pouch snail right here and he's trying to get out. If you put the um, spiral of the pot pouch snail on top the opening shows you whether it's a left hand or a right hand snail um, and then at the bottom we have some fingerling clams these are all in the mollusk group soft body animals with limey shells and then next coming over in this next bucket we have a leech and I can show you on my chart I think where the leech is here 
And if you can see that, this is one of the, just a key to life in the pond. We show that. The leech is really cool because it has a mouth part that grabs onto one end and then brings up the back of its body. So it's cool to watch him climb up a jar um, in a jar of water. So next, coming over to the next bucket, I have some, oh, and there's a little bit of a glare. I have crayfish. These crayfish look exactly like miniature lobsters, pretty much. Um, they can get almost about as big as your hand, but these are still pretty little if you look at the size of my hand compared to them. Um, and they'll carry their eggs and their babies under their tail in the early spring. You might find some. So here's the, the crayfish on the chart. And then we'll go over here to the next bucket where I have uh, dragonfly nymphs. And these critters right here, they, uh, the eggs are laid in water by the adult dragonflies. They hatch into nymphs or this larval stage, and then they grow successfully bigger in this stage until they finally hatch into their final adult stage. You'll find those exoskeletons out on um, the land or on a, on a piece of plant material. Um, so you might see the crusty outer exoskeleton. That means the dragonfly hatched out and flew away the beautiful jewels in the sky. So in the next bucket here, we have a giant water bug. And that's a pretty cool find. Um, he's pretty neat. I think there's a water boatman underneath of him. Well, okay, the water boatman is hiding right underneath of him, but I have another one in this next bucket. I have a tadpole, which was my really big, big, exciting um, find because I knew there were a lot of frogs in that pond. There definitely should have been a tadpole. And also, I found eggs, a couple masses of eggs on these leaves both leaves and then underneath these leaves I'm gonna lift these up there's a water boatman with those big kind of giant oars for legs kind of paddling around and oh there's another there's the water boatman in the other bucket with the water <laughs> beetle and what I'm gonna show you now is how this relates to the water quality of the pond so in the pond we have a um, an identification guide here and in this top row are the higher quality it shows um, macroinvertebrates that cannot tolerate as much pollution in the pond so they're worth a few more points each one of these is worth three points and I had water boatmen I had eggs and I had tadpoles so that was three different species of uh, critters in category two, that can tolerate a little bit more uh, pollution. The dragonfly nymphs, um, the scud, oh, I forgot to show you the little scud or side swimmer. Those are so small, you may not have been able to see that, but they're, they're pretty tiny. But I did have a scud. I had the water beetle. I had the fingerling clams, and I had um, the crayfish. So I had six species in that category. In the final category, I had a leech and I had two different um, species of snails, an orb snail and a pouch snail and the leech and that was three different species. And then I'm going to turn this over to show you group one, three species, counts as three points so it's nine total points. In category two, there were six species for two points, total of 12. Um, group three, three species for one point each, total of three. Our total points were 24, and that falls into the excellent water quality category. So just by scooping in the pond, that gives you a bit of an idea of the water quality um, that we found that I found in that particular pond now on any given day it's a different temperature if you
scoop in different parts of the pond, you might find different things. So you never know what you're gonna find, but I just wanted to share that. You can go scoop for your own uh, critters and see what kind of water quality critters you get. And so you're almost like a water scientist or a limnologist, as we'd like to say. And so I just wanted to say thanks for joining me for this. And um, we'll wrap up in another portion. Hey there, I just wanted to let you know, if you have younger kids, you could let them use a smaller net, even an aquarium dip net. Um, I forgot to bring that along with me, but um, they're, they were about my height. They could just stand right at the edge of the pond and scoop towards themselves, drag the net like this, and then just look through it and see what you find. Oh, I got something right there on that leaf. And um, just like, like you, if you want to scoop with the bigger net, um, they can scoop with the smaller net, or you could scoop with the bigger net and put things into a bigger bucket that they could scoop out of. Go out, scoop in a body of water, see what you find, and then make sure you return everything back to where it lives because it needs to get returned back to its own home. So thanks, I'm Jan Ward um, with the Lake County Forest Preserves. Check out our website for information at lcfpd.org. And also look for us on our social media sites. Um, they're on our website also. Thanks, I hope to see you in the Forest Preserve someday in the future. Bye.